Hi, I'm Ben, and today I want to share with you three updates that we've made to the Element CMS in just the past week. To do that, I'm going to continue working on the North 11 site. So you should remember from last week, we have this collection of projects set up. So I've used the CMS collection component, and I've linked that collection to our projects here. Each one of these projects is then linked directly to the project template. And if I preview this page, you'll see that we get those three projects listed. When I click on one of these projects, you'll see the data for that project is being inserted onto the page. So if I go back and we use project two, you'll see that the data there is different. Okay, so to continue working on this project, the first feature I want to show you is data importing. You can now import markdown files directly into the element CMS. To do that, in the finder, I've got a folder of sample articles here. These articles can simply be dropped straight into Elements. So we've now got a folder of articles with all of our markdown files in here. If we want to use these articles as a blog, let's create a blog page. We'll pop that at the top root. We'll rename this as blog, and we will ensure that we are using PHP. Okay, now I'm going to drop in some globals. So we've got a global header, we've got a section heading, and we've got a footer. Now to speed things up for this demo, I've also created an article listing global here. So all I've done ahead of time is create a container. And inside of that container, we have a collection listing. And I've designed how I want each one of the items in this collection to be displayed. So all we need to do is link this collection up to our imported articles. So we go page, CMS, articles. So this is the folder that I've just dragged into Elements. I set the link there. When we preview the page, you can see all of these articles are now being listed. So all we did was drop in a folder of markdown files and we were good to go. That's it. You, that's how you can get data straight into Elements. Now, these articles have been formatted in the same way as the projects files that I showed you last week. If you're coming from another system that doesn't follow this exact format, we can still get around that and we can import your data into Elements. Now, there's a couple of different approaches. So let's have a look at how we could get uh, data from another system into Elements. Some of you might have previously been using the Alloy system from Elixir Graphics that's no longer being maintained. I've got a folder of sample posts here that are uh, from the Alloy blogging system. So you can see that the front matter here is not in the same format as, uh, as our other markdown files. You can see we have a topper uh, image here that's being used. Uh, so we're not following the same format, but that's fine. We can, we, as I say, we have a couple of different approaches for this. The first approach is we can just drop these posts straight into Elements. And on our blog here, if we relink this collection up to those posts, so we go CMS posts, this is the alloy example posts, we set the link there. Now the image we're using in the listing here is linking to an item image source. So that doesn't exist in the uh, alloy posts. What does exist is an item dot topper. So if we have a look at one of the posts here, you'll see we have a topper and that's being linked directly to a URL. Now this uh, image uh, URL doesn't exist anymore. So I'm just gonna replace this with an unsplash image so we've got something to work with. Okay, so we know this image now exists on this post at least. And on our blog page, we're still using the item title and we're getting the item body and we're doing, uh, we're stripping the tags and we're, we're getting the first 50 characters. So a little bit advanced there, but that is the twig uh, templating syntax, and you can use any of the filters as we're doing here. Okay, so I've linked this collection up to the post now. If I preview this in the browser, you'll see all of these images are actually being, um, or they're not being found because they don't exist anymore. So these example posts had URLs to images that have been removed from the internet. But you can see the one that I've updated does have an image. 
So the process here would be that you need to ensure that the images uh, that you're linking to in the Alloy blogs uh, or the Alloy blog posts are available on the internet. Uh, your other option is to import those images as uh, resources into here. So if we update another post, um, let's find one here. Uh, what we can do is instead of having a topper, we can have an image and we would have an array here. So we would say the source. And if we've imported these images into elements, we can reference them here. So we could say instead uh, images slash, and let's copy one of these and we'll paste that in. And we can say the alt is a nice image. Okay, so this black and white photography has been updated. If we go and preview this again, we should be able to find, and that's not working because I forgot to update this image. So we're still using the image.topper here, but what we want is the item image.source. So if we go and preview that again, you'll now see that the black and white photography uh, image is working. So there's a couple of different ways to um, update your uh, previous blog post. So you, you might need to do a little bit of work, but if all of these images still exist on the internet, the hard-coded URLs that are in these posts, let's find one with a topper. So as long as, long as this um, URL still exists, the image is at this URL, all of your blog post images will simply just work. As I say, your other option is to import your images into the, your uh, resources in your project and then link to those as I just showed you. Okay, update number two is collection search. Let me show you how this works. Let's get rid of this article listing for now. And what I'm gonna do is add a new collection search. So let's drop that straight into here. And what I want actually is a container around that. So I'm gonna put a container and I'm gonna put the search inside of there. Okay, this is a new component that we're still working on. It is very much a work in progress, but I wanna show you it early so that I can get your feedback on this. Collection search works similarly to a collection in the sense that we need to link this collection search to a CMS collection. So I'm gonna link it to my articles. And inside of here, we can now design how we want our search to look. So the first thing we need to do is add some form of input. So we can use the form components and we'll drop an input into here. We can then style this as we've done before. We can say search articles as the placeholder. And then what we need to do is design the results below. So again, this is similar to the collection listing. You're free to design how each one of the results look. So what we might want to do is let's add a flex into here. Then we'll add some text and we'll simply output the item.title. Uh, on the flex, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, spacing. So we'll enable that there and we'll put some padding on the top. Let's make the text slightly larger so we can see it. And obviously we can change the color and things like that, but this will do for now just to show you how it's working. So we've got our collection search and we've linked that up to our articles. Let's go ahead and preview that. Now, if we just start typing, you'll see that all of the articles that match this search term are being listed. It's as simple as that to set up a collection search on your site. So if I continue uh, searching for different things, you'll see how they get filtered down. So we've got a Sydney, let's search for something in London. Let's search for the time, there we go, the timeless elegance. We've got all of our different articles here that match this search term. And this is instant client side search automatically done for you in a component in Elements. All you need to do is set up your collection of markdown files, link the search to those markdown files and you're good to go. So if we want to design this further, we have access to all the data in the same way we do in the collection listing. So if we wanted more than just the title, let's duplicate that there. And let's say we wanted the date. And let's say we want to add a border in between each one of these. So let's put a border on the bottom and we'll add a little bit of spacing there as well. So if we, uh, let's actually, let's make the title uh, bold. 
so that we can differentiate that. And let's go ahead and preview again. Now when we start typing, you'll see that we get a completely different design for our search results. And once again, you've got access to all of the data. So if you wanted to add the image, for example, into here, we can just drop that in. We can say we want to use CMS for this image. We can have all of the standard controls. So let's set the aspect ratio to wide. Uh, we can set the sizing here. Let's say it's 200 pixels. And let's put that above there. Something like that. Let's have a look at that. And again, we start typing. And you can see we get the image for each one of those items. So again, this is the power of elements. You've got complete control and flexibility to design the site however you like. These search results will be returned to you. You can set up the template for those items to look however you want. Okay, so as I say, this is a work in progress component. It's very early days for this search, but I do think the setup is really nice here. We will have more options. You will be able to style this differently, but this component allows you to put a collection search anywhere on your site. So we can just move this around. If we wanted it up in the, um, in the menu bar, we could just drag that up into here if we wanted to. So as I say, you can just move this around. Let's say we want it uh, at the very top. You can just pop it in there. Uh, so this, again, this is the power of elements. You get the freedom to build up the design for your site however you want. Okay, the final feature I want to show you this week is Open Graph Tag Support. To do that, I'm going to go back to the projects example from earlier. So if you remember, we've got our collection of projects listed. Let's preview that in the browser. And we've got those here. We click on one. And what we want is Open Graph Tag Support for this template page. So to do that, on my project template page here, you'll see I've got a collection item. This is fetching the data for the current item being displayed in the browser. If we want open graph tags for this template, all we need to do is turn them on here. We then get access to all of the data for this item. So again, you should be familiar with this. This is the twig templating syntax. You have all the data for the item available here. So you can see I've pre-filled these with a few of the pieces of data for this item. So if we go back to the browser and refresh, if I inspect the code for this page, make this slightly larger. And if we go up to the head area, you can see that we now have these open graph tags in the page. So you can see here the project two title is uh, being inserted, the URL, the image for this uh, project, all the data for this project is being pulled into this template for you and we're putting the open graph tags into the head of the page once you turn this on. So it's as simple as that to add open graph tags to any one of your collection items. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed these updates. As I always say, please leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Are we on the right track, the wrong track? Are we missing something? We want your feedback so that we can form and build this product to be exactly what you guys want it to be. Okay, as I say, that's it for this week and I'll see you in the next one.